Well, good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to worship at Trinity Lutheran Church. It's kind of dark, isn't it? Well, that's maybe the spirit will come to light us up. At least on the inside, huh? Yeah. Uh, the power must have gone off somewhere. So people were telling me that they heard this big boom. If you have a cell phone, by the way, you might have a flashlight on your cell phone. If you need to have a little bit more light. That's what I would recommend, at least until we uh, uh, get the lights back on. <clears throat> Let's see. Uh, Dana wants to thank all those who brought food uh, and other items to the dinner after the memorial service yesterday. So thank you to those of you who did that. Um, we have another dinner coming up on the 22nd of May. That's, yeah, that's next Saturday. This coming Saturday, isn't it? Yes, sir. Yeah, the women are providing a barbecue, and uh, so that, that'll be coming up, too. Let's see. Um, then uh, we are having a Memorial Day worship experience, uh, hopefully at the uh, cemetery. But if not, we'll come, if it, you're well conducted here in the church. That's May 31st this year, the last, the last uh, Sunday, or the last day of the month, I think. Um, and then the very next day is uh, the orchestra, the Lake uh, Community Orchestra is having their first concert, and it'll be at St. Michael's uh, here in Musselville. So it's about May 1, 2, 10, and 1, 2. And uh, let's see, what, are, what else am I missing? Any, any other announcements? Okay. Well, then let us open our service with our thanksgiving for baptism. Hallelujah! Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Hallelujah! Refreshed by the resurrection light we share in Christ, let us give thanks for the gift of baptism. We thank you, risen Christ, for these waters where you make us new, leading us from death to life, from tears to joy. We bless you, risen Christ, that your spirit comes to us in the grace of the waters of your birth, by rains to our thirsty earth, by streams that revive our souls, by the of cool water shared with strangers. Breathe your peace on your church when we hide in fear. Hold us with your mercy and greatness. Send us companions on our journey as we share your life. Make us one risen Christ. Cleanse our hearts. Shower us with life. To you be given all praise with the Holy Spirit and the glory of God now and forever. Amen. Our gathering song is Christ is Alive. Let the Christians sing.
the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also be with you.
who subdues the peoples under us and the nations under our feet. Who chooses our inheritance for us, the bride of Jacob, whom God loves. God has gone up with a shout, the Lord with the sound of the ram's horn. Sing praises to God, sing praises, sing praises to our King, sing praises. For God is King of all the earth, sing praises with a song. God reigns over the nations, God is the throne of God. The nobles of the peoples have gathered as the people of the kingdom of Abraham. The rulers of the earth belong to God, who is highly exalted. The Holy Gospel according to St. Luke, the 24th chapter. Glory to you, Lord. Jesus said to the eleven and those with them, These are my words that I spoke to you while I was still with you. That everything written about me in the law of Moses, the prophets, and the Psalms must be fulfilled. Then he opened their minds to understand the scriptures, and he said to them, Thus it is written that the Messiah is to suffer and to rise from the dead on the third day, and that repentance and forgiveness of sins is to be proclaimed in his name to all nations, beginning from Jerusalem. You are witnesses of these things, and see, I am sending upon you what my Father promised. So stay here in the city until you have been clothed with power from on high. Then he led them out as far as Bethany, and lifting up his hands, he blessed them. And while he was blessing them, he withdrew from them and was carried up into heaven. And they worshipped him and returned to Jerusalem with great joy. And they were continually in the temple, blessing God. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. There was a woman who lived in the hills of Kentucky and she won a contest, the prize of which was an all expenses paid trip to New York City. Now this woman hadn't seen a city even in Kentucky much less something as large as New York. And so she was very awestruck by the grandeur of the place. And she was especially fascinated with elevators. She was in one building in the lobby of one building, and she saw this old man just kind of creeping by, you know, and had a cane and he was walking with him. He walked over to the elevator and, and the doors opened up and he got on board and and the doors closed, and she could watch the numbers light up in an ascending fashion until she got to, to the top, and, and, uh, and then it stopped, of course. And then she saw the numbers descending, uh, lighting up, and she knew the elevator was coming down. And she waited and waited until it got down, back down to the lobby, and the doors opened up, and this very young man, muscular, came out, fine suit he was wearing and carrying a briefcase. Just walked right on. She looked at her guide and she said, my goodness, God bless us all. If I'd have known about that contraption, I'd have brought along my old man. <laughs> <laughs> the sword reminded me of the ascension of Jesus. And in some ways, his ascension is like that elevator. But in other ways, it's different. But it still is a blessing. As a matter of fact, in the Gospel, it says, while Jesus was blessing the apostles, he, he wrote, he ascended into heaven. So, so today I wanted to share with you just a few ideas about what it means for us to have, to enjoy God's ascension blessing. Well, the first thing that might come to mind is whether or not it really is a blessing at all and whether the disciples actually felt it that way. I mean, this is like the second time Jesus has left them. Uh, uh, when he died on the cross, he left them then. Uh, he came back in the resurrection. But now he's leaving them once again. And it almost seems like it's a, a more a permanent leaving as well. It's like he's abandoning them. William Willimon, dean of the chapel at Duke University, he 
was at New Haven, Connecticut, which is where Yale University is, and he he was listening to a boys' choir from a church that was near Yale, Connecticut, and uh, they were singing a composition called Deus Ascendit, which means God goes up. And he thought, as he was listening, how appropriate. God has gone up and away. That's, what he, that's how he felt. Because it was in the 70s. It was a very turbulent time. It was during uh, the, the trial for the Black Panther leaders. Uh, there was rebellion and uh, violence everywhere. And Wilman thought, my goodness, it is as though God has abandoned us to our confusion, to our violence, to our rebellions. And then he listened a little bit more to the song. And he said, well, they're not singing Deus Abscondit, which means God has abandoned us. They're singing Deus Ascendit, which means God goes up. And he goes up to finish the work he began in Jesus, when he sent him to the earth in the first place. He's going to finish that in heaven. Now we might think and argue, well, I thought it was finished. Jesus' work. After all, on the cross, he said, it is finished. And there were a certain degree it was. And Jesus, Jesus did everything that needed to be done to secure our forgiveness, he did everything that needed to be done to secure our invitation to heaven. He did everything that needed to be done to rescue us from death. There wouldn't be anybody else to come along and say, I got, I'm here to finish Jesus' work. No, that was finished. But the work that needed to be continued is telling the world about the good news. And Jesus says to them, you are my witnesses beginning from Jerusalem and Judea, and then to Samaria you go, and then to the ends of the earth. And that, that work hasn't been completed yet, has it? No. And then finally Jesus will come again to draw everything into the perfection that God had intended for creation. But, but, uh, but th th he's, there is work still to be done, and we're the ones that are supposed to do it. Jesus said to them, it is to your advantage that I go away, because when I go away, I will send to you the Holy Spirit, which will empower you to believe in me, which will empower you to be my witnesses, which will even empower you to witness my forgiveness. Sister Helen Prejean, author of Dead Men Walking, at the very end of her book, she tells a story about uh, a man by the name of Lloyd LeBlanc. He was a father who lost a son to murder. A man had murdered him. And when they called him out to the cane field where his son's body lay, he uh, knelt down next to it and it just uh, automatically began the Lord's Prayer. And he said, even when he got to that place where it says, forgive us our trespasses, where we forgive those who trespass against us, he said he didn't hesitate, he just went right on. But he said, the next day, I had to pray again. And the next day I had to pray again, and again, and again. Because the bitterness and the resentment, well, it just took a time, a long time, to leave. Even though the blank had apologized, or I'm sorry, the, the perpetrator had apologized, the blank standard. It is the Spirit of God that gives us the power even to forgive as we have been forgiven. That's a, that, that power from the Holy Spirit is a, one of Ascension's blessings. And secondly, it, uh, it gives us a chance to ask, well, who's, who's coming back? You know, we know Jesus left, we saw him leaving, but is he coming back? And the, the passage says, why are you looking up to heaven? This Jesus who was taken away from you into heaven will come in the same way as you saw him go into heaven. Oh, the cloud, which is uh, 
a symbol for God's presence and power. Then Cloud that was at the Transfiguration and, and said to the disciples there, this is my beloved son, listen to him. And it will be the same Jesus who comes back. Probably will still have the same nail marks in his hands and in his side. The same one who healed when he was here on earth will bring healing. The same one who forgave in the name of his father and who will bring that forgiveness as well. The same one that's, that's coming back. It won't be anything like death. Death will be no more, he said. Or the judgment that he brings back will be the judgment that he gave when he was here, which is, Father, forgive them. He'll bring his righteousness to make that happen. There was a man, his name was Anthony DeMello, and he wrote a story about the Buddha. And the Buddha was on a trip, and he was accosted by a bandit. And the bandit was not only going to rob him, but he was going to kill him. And the Buddha says, well, just grant me a dying wish. And the bandit said, well, what is it? And the Buddha says, go over to that tree over there and cut off a slower, that lower branch that's on it and bring it to me. So the bandit went over, whooped out a sort of whoosh, took off the branch and brought it to the Buddha. And, uh, the Buddha, and he says, well, what now? And the Buddha says, now put it back. And the bandit says, you got to be crazy. Nobody can put the tree back, or the limb back once it's been cut off. And the Buddha says, well, you're the one who's crazy. Because you think that power resides in the ability to destroy the ability to kill. Real power resides in the ones who can create and heal. And that's what Jesus will do, when he, even when he comes again, is he will heal. It says in scriptures, every knee shall bow and every tongue confess that Jesus is Lord. And uh, they will do it, we will do it willingly with gladness, not with resentment or with rebellion, but with gladness. And that presence of that kind of forgiving and loving Lord and His return is our second blessing of the ascension. And then the third one is our own ascension. We're all going to go up. And as a matter of fact, uh, you can just, just imagine the doors opening out in that elevator and all of us getting inside. Yeah. But come back to, he says to take him to himself. And in Thessalonians, the people were wondering, well, what has happened to the people that have already died? And, and Paul writes, well, don't worry about them. Uh, uh, when the trumpet sounds and God's command is made and the, the, the Lord Jesus will descend and those who have died will rise first. And then those of us who are still alive when he comes will rise with them to meet the Lord in the air so that we will be with him forever. So we get to look forward to our own ascension. There was a doctor. This is back in the days when they made households. <clears throat> went out to see a farmer, one of his patients, and as he was tending to him, the doctor grabbed the, I'm sorry, the farmer grabbed the doctor's arm, and he said, Doctor, I'm afraid to die. Tell me what's on the other side. And the doctor said, well, I, I am a professional man, but I frankly don't know what's on the other side. Um, I mean, I read the Bible too, but the Bible says very little about what's on the other side as well, so I, I don't know. And the, the man was still so agitated, you know. And all of a sudden, they heard a scratching outside the bedroom door. And the doctor went over to open it up, and as soon as he opened it up, this dog leaped in, started jumping up on him, you know, with gladness. And the doctor turned to the farmer and said, did 
you see my dog? Usually he stays in the car. I bring him on my grounds, but he usually stays in the car. But for some reason today, he decided to try to come in. He's never been here before. He had no idea what was on the other side of that door, except he knew that his master was there. And that was enough. As soon as I opened up, he just <laughs> leaps right on him. And the doctor says, I don't know what's on the other side of death's door. But I do know that my master is there, a loving, giving master. And that will be enough for me to step over that threshold, not with fear, but with gladness. That for us is the third blessing of the ascension. It's a blessing that enriches our lives, that gives us courage, a blessing that comes from the Holy Spirit, a blessing that is a part of God's ascension blessing. <laughs> Yeah. 
congregation's response to hear us, O God, is your mercy is great. You call the whole church on earth to worship and bless you. Empower your church to bear joyful witness to your love made known in Jesus Christ. Hear us, O God. Hear us, O God. You fashioned a habitat for all your creatures, and you filled the earth with your glory. Give rain where it is needed, and rescue those inundated by floods. Mend what we have torn in the fabric of creation, and replenish and nourish your world. Hear us, O God. Hear us, O God. In the majesty of your love, you rule the world with justice and mercy. Give those in authority the spirit of your love, so that all who are hungry and poor receive food and resources, and all people flourish and live in peace. Hear us, O God. Hear us, O God. Heal those who are sick and bind up the brokenhearted. Attend to the cares and needs of the hurting and hopeless in our congregation, community, workplaces, schools, and families especially for those we now lift up before you by name. Sally Everhart. Natalie Kirshner. Arlene Sauer. Hear us, O oh God. You have gathered us in this congregation, enlightened our hearts, and given us a share of the immeasurable greatness of your power. Help us to love one another, be reconciled where we are divided, and share the riches of your grace with our neighbors. Hear us, O God. In raising Christ from the dead, you put your great power to work in the world. Raise us and all who have died in the faith of Christ. We remember people in our lives and in our community, especially Sean Crocker, whose memorial service we participated in yesterday. Send your comforting spirit upon his family and friends. And we thank you for their gifts among us. Hear us, O oh God. In the hope of new life in Christ, we raise our prayers to you, trusting in your never-ending goodness and mercy through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. Lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. We indeed give you our thanks and praise, Lord. For in the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks. He broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup and gave thanks and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Let us pray together the prayer Jesus taught us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done.
Let us pray. Life-giving God, in the mystery of Christ's resurrection, you send light to conquer darkness, water to give you light, and the bread of life to nourish your people. Send this Lord and the witnesses to your Son's resurrection, that we may show you glory to all the world. Through Jesus Christ, our risen Lord. Amen. And now may the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you his peace. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Our sending song is, O Christ, our hope. <laughs> Thank mm -hmm. you.